Last week, looking at the subject of really being brave, uh, being valiant, as the, the Bible talks about. And uh, we looked at a lot of things last week. Uh, Joshua, we looked in Revelation, uh, then we ended up in, <clears throat> in Ephesians. And I want to continue that uh, this, this morning and, and then into this evening. <clears throat> Excuse me. Be valiant. You know, we, we're living in a, I, I hate to use this word, but kind of a scary world. There, there's, you just never know from moment to moment what might happen. I guess it's always been that way. But uh, nowadays we know more about what's going on and we hear about it all the time. Uh, it's, it's a real challenge to live as a Christian. Again, that's nothing new. But uh, as Christians, we, uh, we need to be valiant. We need to be strong. Sometimes we're going to face things that are unique to us. Health problems, financial problems. Uh, we need to, to be brave. Other times we're going to face things that affect everyone. Uh, there's things affecting our country, affecting our world. There's some terrible things going on. It's, uh, as Christians, we, I think the Lord's coming soon. But uh, in the meanwhile, we've, we've got to be strong. Let's read, let me read uh, Ephesians 6. I'm going to read verses 10 through 19. I'll go ahead and read the whole passage to start with. <coughs> Ephesians 6, starting in verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I, I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. We'll just stop reading there. You know, he's encouraging us to, really, if, if we're going to be strong, we need to rely on the Lord's strength. He's not just talking about an inner strength that comes from you. He's talking about a, a strength that comes from the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And as well, he's encouraging us to be prepared. You know, God has provided what you need to, to live this life. Uh, he's given you everything you need. And uh, we need to know our enemy. We need to keep our armor on. You know, there's just some things he's, he's saying here. But we need to understand living for God is not easy. When you become a Christian, you automatically get an enemy. In fact, you get more than one, but the, the other ones are there no matter what. The Bible talks about the world, the flesh, and the devil. You know, some of the biggest battles you'll have will be with yourself. <laughs> uh, the world. And, of course, the devil uses the lure of the world. He uses the lust of the flesh. I wanted to read 1 John 2, verses 15 to 17. He talks about the world. 1 John 2, verse 15. <clears throat> yeah, if we're going to know our enemy, we need to understand he's going to use the lure of the world. And it is alluring. You know, there's a lot of things in life where you think, oh, that'd be great. 1 John 2, verse 15, he says, Love not the world... Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You know, there's things that can bring you temporary happiness. But God wants to give you eternal joy. And, you know, Satan is always trying to tempt us. We use that word lure. You use that in fishing, don't you? Well, what are you trying to do when you use a lure in fishing? You're trying to hook them. And that's exactly what Satan is trying to do. He's trying to hook us with the, the lures of the world, with the lusts of the flesh. God says, uh, Galatians 5, 16, 
This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. God wants us to walk with Him, to walk in the Spirit. So we need to know our enemy. We need to rely on God's power. Uh, like he says in Ephesians 6 there, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. As Christians, we often use Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. You know, what God wants you to do, <clears throat> what God asks you to go through, He'll go with you. He'll give you the strength. You know, there's so much comfort and hope in the Scripture. You know, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a blessing to know the Lord. Uh, folks, we can't lose our salvation. Uh, God says in John 10, No man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Yeah, when you get saved, uh, God says it's eternal life. And it comes from Him. It doesn't come from us. It doesn't come from our works. Uh, there was a song, The world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. <laughs> and it's true. Uh, you can't lose your salvation. But listen, you can lose your usefulness. Paul talks about being a shipwreck. You know, nothing more useless than a wrecked ship. <laughs> you know, the fish like it, the divers can do it. But that's not what ships are made for. They're made to go out to sea. They're made to have a use. And, you know, as Christians, you can't lose your salvation, but you can't lose uh, your usefulness. Living for God is not easy. Living by faith is not easy. Do you ever think about all the things God asks us to do and almost all of it you can't see? You know, when God says to put on the armor, <coughs> wouldn't it be nice if, if there was a physical armor you could put on and you could say, yeah, I'm, I'm, boy, I'm ready. <laughs> but it's not physical. But when He gives this lesson this morning in, in Ephesians 6, he's, he's not talking about pieces of physical armor. He's talking about spiritual truths, salvation, faith, righteousness, and so on. Uh, you know, we, we need to understand we can't see the armor. It's hard to live by faith. We can't even see our enemy. You know, he says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. You know, we might look at people and think, oh, they're the enemy. God says, no. Uh, it's principalities, it's powers, it's spiritual wickedness in high places. We, we can't even see God. <laughs> you know, we can see what He's done. Uh, that's why it's called faith, folks. You know, it's, it's not by sight, it's by faith. Living by faith is not easy, not only because we can't see it, because, but because it's unnatural. You ever think about that? Living by faith in God is unnatural. <clears throat> in fact, the Bible says that in 1 Corinthians 2.14. The natural man, well, that, that's, uh, the world really... You know, loves that, all, everything natural, you know. God says, The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for their foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they're spiritually discerned. It's unnatural to live by faith. And that's good. <laughs> because God wants us to be supernatural. God wants us to go beyond just, just the natural. He says in, in 2 Corinthians 5, We walk by faith, not by sight. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to do the difficult. It's hard to live for God. It's hard to live by faith. But it starts, this uh, supernatural life starts when we're born again. And what a blessing uh, to be made alive spiritually. Uh, turn to Ephesians 2. I'm going to read a, a fair portion of Scripture here. Being made alive spiritually. Jesus said, you must be born again. It means born from above. To be alive, you had to be born here. To be alive spiritually, you have to be born from above, born of God. Ephesians 2, I think he really uh, brings it home here in, in verse 1. You hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. That's why you have to be born again. You have to be made alive spiritually. Because the way we come out of the box is we're lost. We're sinners. We're undone. In fact, he talks, verse 2, Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Did you notice that? Without Christ, the, the way we start is our nature is we're enemies of God. That's why God says you must be born again. You have to be born of God, born from above, made alive spiritually. Let me read on. Don't you love when God says, but God, <laughs> but God, who is rich in mercy, 
for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us, made a lot, quickened us together with Christ, by grace you're saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Uh, we receive supernatural life. We receive God's life uh, when we're born again, born into God's family. You know, the Bible says that originally we are in Adam. We're born in Adam. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians uh, 15, in Adam all die. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Uh, Romans 5, verse 12, he says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. That was Adam. Ladies, you're off the hook. It, it wasn't Eve, it was Adam. Right. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. You know, that's, that's where we were. In Adam, all die. We need to be in Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. What a blessing that we can be in, in Christ. Uh, that verse in, uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, right before it there, he says this, 1 Corinthians 15, 21, Since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. And then he explains, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. You know, God sent the, he's often called the second Adam. You know, we sing it at Christmas, second Adam from above, Reinstate us in thy love. That's Christ. He's the second Adam. And he's the one who brings life. The first one brought death. The second one brings life. And that's what we need in Christ. We're saved by faith. It's hard to live by faith. It's easy to get saved. And then we, we have to start living. God calls us to live by faith. Living for God by faith is not easy. But here's the point I wanted to get to this morning. Living for God by faith is the only way to have victory. Everything else is to lose. Now, the world, up to the last minute, oftentimes thinks they're winning. Think, Man, this is great. We're, we're in charge. We're winning. Until they pass through death's door. Living for God by faith is the only way to have victory. 1 John 5, 4, he says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Uh, there's a verse in 2 Corinthians 2, verse 14. I, I love this when he says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Always causeth us to triumph in Christ. Uh, living for God by faith brings victory. And remember, we live by faith because we can't see the enemy, we can't see the armor, we can't see the Lord. Uh, but he says we can, we can know and we can live by faith. You know, in Ephesians, let's get back to Ephesians there, chapter 6, verse 13, he says, wherefore. Now, you know, when you see a wherefore or therefore, you, you see what it's there for. And he, he's been telling us, because we're in a battle, because we need God's strength, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. And that's what I, what I want us to look at this morning. Uh, take unto you means, uh, verse 11, he says, uh, put on. It's not hard. It's not a, a really hard concept, is it? Uh, with armor, you hide in it. <laughs> I, I remember seeing a show where this guy's in the armor, and the guy whacks him in the head, and man, he's, he's dropped his head all the way down into the armor. His, his helmet comes off, his head's not there, but he's hidden in it, you know? And that's, a, that's the kind of picture you need to get. We're, we're hiding and really, we're hiding in Christ. Uh, that's hiding in Jesus. Verse 13, he says, take unto you. Uh, I'm told that's a military command. You know, God says, put it on. Soldier, put it on. Uh, take it up in order to use it. And a very important part about armor is, put on, take unto you the whole armor of God. We need it all. If you don't use it all... The place Satan is going to attack you is where you don't have your armor on. He's no dummy. Ephesians 4, verse 27, it says, Neither give place to the devil. 
Now that word place is not a real hard word. Uh, it just means this place or that place. Uh, if you don't put your armor on, Satan says, I'm going to hit him in that place. <laughs> you know, you don't put on the, the breastplate of righteousness, you say, I'm going to hit him in that place. <laughs> you don't put on the, the shoes, you say, I'll hit him in that place. Uh, it's, not, it's not a real hard concept. Uh, don't give place to the devil. And he starts off there in Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verse 14. St Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Uh, we often call this the belt of truth. Uh, but the key uh, teaching here is the truth. Uh, truth is, is so important. And he, what he's talking about here is, as Christians, we need to have a commitment to truth. You know, it's, it's not uncommon for us to lie. I'm sorry, but it's just true. Sometimes we lie about what we don't say. You know, you can, you can use body language to lie. <laughs> but sometimes we actually lie. We lie to the government. We lie to our husband or wife. We, you know, we lie to the policeman or uh, whoever. And God says we need to have a commitment to truth. Oh, Satan is called the father of lies. He's not our father for Christians. Jesus is called the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, he uses the picture here of the armor. And I'm told, I've never worn armor, but I'm told that in armor the belt keeps everything else in place. Now you can imagine, uh, it must have been hard to fight in armor. And if that armor was flapping around, man, you're, you're going to be in trouble. You need that belt of truth. You need that belt uh, to hold the, the breastplate in. Uh, they wore, it was almost like a dress, you know, just had a hole for the head and a hole for the arms, went down. They had to tuck that into the belt. And when they were fighting, man, they needed everything to be sure and, and steady and, and ready to go. They couldn't be worried about that. They were fighting for their life. And, and what God is saying here is, get rid of the loose ends. You know, in life, we have, we have a lot of little things that are niggling at us. We haven't dealt with this, and we haven't dealt with that, and we, we know we should do this, and we know God has told us to do that. Listen, get it all tucked in there with the belt of truth. Just do what's right. Uh, I guess it was Bob Jones used to say, do right even if it makes the stars fall. <laughs> you know, if you're doing right, it's going to cause the end of the universe, so be it. God bless us. We get to go to heaven. And do what's right. And he's saying, start with the truth. He, he pictures this in 1 Peter 1 when he talks about girding up the loins of your minds. Same picture. Gird up the loins of your mind. Get, get everything under the belt of truth. Uh, he uses another picture in Hebrews 12 when he talks about laying aside every weight. That's talking about running. Now, we may not have seen people fight in armor. We've all seen people run. Have you ever seen somebody run trying to carry something? Baby, you know, or things? It doesn't work. Real runners lay aside every weight. And that's what he's saying here is we can't uh, let other things take the place of the truth that God has for us. Put everything under truth. You know, the priorities of your life. If truth is the basis, they'll fall in place. Uh, right and wrong will fall into place. You know, sometimes when you, oh, what should I do? Well, what's the truth? What does God say? Uh, relationships. You know, all kinds of things. Uh, the belt of truth, it keeps everything in place. Very, very foundational. The other thing you might notice is the belt covers your stomach area. And that's pretty much where you feel things. And it's a real good lesson to think about. Uh, don't go by your emotions. Go by the truth. Don't go by how you feel about things. You know, the world says the opposite. It says, listen to your heart. God says, don't listen to your heart. Listen to your stomach. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, he, he says, listen to the truth. Cover those emotions. Cover those emotions with the truth. God gave us emotions. Emotions aren't wrong in themselves. But they're not what guides us. We need, to, uh, we need to live by the truth. And not just knowing the truth is enough. We need to be committed to it. We need to be living it. So first, number one, commitment to truth. Secondly, he says, the breastplate of righteousness. This part covers some really vital organs, doesn't it? The breastplate. And uh, I, I believe he's talking here about righteous behavior. Doing what's right. Personal holiness based on God's holiness. And the reason I say that is, when you get saved, you receive the righteousness of Christ. 
You have the imputed righteousness of Christ. He says, therefore being justified by faith, that means declared righteous, we have peace with God. So I don't think he's, he's talking about that. That's not something we can put on and take off. You're either saved or you're not as far as, uh, as um, your sins being forgiven and have, having the righteousness of, of Christ. But now we need to live what we are. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, he puts it this way, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. As Christians, we talk to the young people, we've talked on Wednesday night about conscience. You know, God's Holy Spirit within us can help us to know what's right and wrong, guided by His Word, unless we've defiled it, unless we've seared it, unless we've corrupted it. Uh, we need God's, the, the breastplate of righteousness, and we'll be guided by the truth uh, to know this. Righteous behavior, uh, practical obedience to the Lord. You know, we need to be careful we don't have unconfessed sin in our life. We need to be careful that we don't uh, allow sinful habits. You know, I, I've heard people excuse wrong behavior by something as foolish as the color of their hair. <laughs> oh, you know, Pastor, i got red hair. Okay. <laughs> Listen, whether you have hair or no hair, uh, that's no excuse. Uh, we need to put on the breastplate of, of righteousness. I'm finding that as a Christian, it's easy sometimes to ignore just basic obedience to the Lord. It's, I don't know, as, as a pastor, sometimes it's kind of frustrating. You know, it's not, you expect to fight the world. But, you know, I spend a lot of my time trying to persuade Christians to do what Christians should do. Man, that's not how we should have to spend our time. We need to put on the breastplate of righteousness. If we, uh, if we don't, if we're giving in to sin here, a little bit of sin there, uh, that's the place. That's giving place to the devil. And uh, he'll, he'll find the opening. You know, it's such a precious promise there in verse 16. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked when he comes down to the, to the shield of faith. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. But he says there in, in verse 14, having on the, the breastplate of righteousness. You know, God wants us to put on the armor. It starts with truth, then righteousness. Paul had written to, to Timothy, flee also youthful lusts and follow righteousness. Then he, he says in verse 15, the preparation of the gospel of peace. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I found this a, a really interesting one. You know, some people are fascinated with shoes, uh, have shoe collections, that kind of thing. As a Christian, you don't need a shoe collection. You just need these shoes, all right? Uh, one size fits all. And really what he's talking about here is know that you're saved. The preparation of the gospel of peace. You know, shoes have to do with how you stand. If, you, if your shoes aren't right, you ever had uncomfortable shoes? Man, it, it can really mess up your day. Uh, but it, for a warrior, man, he needs shoes, number one, just to protect his feet and so he can run across the rocks and all kinds of things. But he needs it so he can stand firm. It has to do with his, his stand. And he, he, the Bible talks here about the preparation of the gospel of peace. If you understand and believe the gospel, you have that assurance of knowing that you're saved. You're not going to have to keep messing with that. Uh, you're able to stand firm because of the gospel. I mentioned already Romans 5.1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. <coughs> because we know that God has justified us, we're not worrying about our relationship to the Lord. We're looking to serve the Lord in, in standing against the enemy. Uh, your feet are the foundation of your stand, and uh, the shoes represent your confidence in the power of God. If you're worried whether God can save you, man, you're not going to have that, that uh, firm foundation. It's the gospel that gives us that assurance. I believe that's what he's talking about when he says, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You know, our, our, our assurance comes from the gospel. It's not from an experience. You know, it's not because we've seen God or had a ceremony or, uh, for most people, because they think they're self-righteous. Uh, yeah, I find it, everybody thinks they're okay. It's, it's other people that are the problem. Do you know the devil believes in God? 
The Bible tells us that he believes in God, but that doesn't make him a Christian. Uh, we need to understand uh, God wants us to live uh, by the truth. He wants us to live holy lives. He wants us to live in assurance of the gospel. He's able to save. And then he says in verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith. Uh, we resist temptation by believing God. You know, he, he mentions there that we're, you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Satan wants to, he wants to destroy us. He wants to tempt us. And boy, it can be fiery. It can be trouble. But God can help us. He uses the, the words there, above all. That doesn't mean that, that it's any more important than anything else. It just means it's in front of everything else. That's, that's the first line of resistance in this battle, is your faith. When uh, Jesus was tempted, he quoted scripture. You read Matthew 4. It is written. Do you know what? The devil quoted scripture right back to him. Uh, so you, you've got to be careful. Uh, the devil know, probably knows the Bible better than we do. But we need to believe the Lord. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, he says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. God is faithful. We can hold up the, sh the shield of faith. And, and let me encourage you this morning. Sin can't give you what you need or really want or what God can give you. you know, Satan will tempt you. Satan will try and get us to be like the world, and uh, he'll try and get us to, to fall. But you know, what you really want is found in the Lord. When Satan offers love, it's not really love, it's lust. And it doesn't last, and it, it actually hurts you. When Satan offers joy, it's not really joy, it's happiness. And it's, it's only built on the moment. Listen, God doesn't offer you a Disneyland, he offers you heaven. <laughs> It's, a lot, it's much better. Satan offers you temptations. God offers you the real thing. Let me encourage you. Hold up the shield of faith. And then he says in verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You know, the helmet of salvation, I think it's more easily understood when you look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. Uh, he lists some of these in, in 1 Thessalonians. <coughs> I don't believe he's talking about getting saved because he's talking here to a Christian. He's not saying that every day you need to get saved again. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 8, he says, Let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a an helmet, the hope of salvation. He's talking here about the, the hope of salvation or your confidence. And, and what this will do uh, when you have on the helmet of salvation, it gives you the confidence to serve the Lord. I, I don't know if this is a good illustration or not, but most of you have seen American football, gridiron, you know, when they put those helmets on. Man, they use those like weapons. In fact, they're making rules against it. Man, they, they go into the line and boom, that helmet goes in there. It gives them confidence, doesn't it? They might break their neck or whatever, but uh, they think they'll, they'll be all right. Well, salvation, it gives us that confidence, the hope of uh, the hope of, of salvation gives us that confidence to serve the Lord. Well, we don't have to, to worry about this life. Uh, and he's talking here to a person who's already a Christian. Their salvation is secure. And the Bible says when we get saved, we're justified. We're saved from sin's penalty. Now, when we're saved, God begins the process of sanctifying us, being saved from sin's power. And this confidence is we know that someday we're going to be in heaven and saved from sin's presence. Isn't that a blessing with salvation? Someday this will all be gone. All this wickedness and all the battle and all the, the difficulty of trying to live for the Lord. Uh, God says we're glorified in the, in the future tense and we'll be saved from sin's presence. Hebrews 4 says, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. And that's our hope. That's our confidence. The helmet covers the head, and it represents a mind yielded to God and to God's Word. In uh, 2 Corinthians 11, we're warned, But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ. Put on the helmet of salvation. Listen, life is not that complicated. <laughs> it just really isn't. We need the simplicity that's in Christ. We need confidence in a full and final salvation. 
You know, not believing that we can lose our salvation or that we have to work for our salvation. The gospel gives you that assurance of salvation. The hope of sal salvation gives you the confidence to serve the Lord. I, I mean, really. I guess in, in this life, for most of us, I guess the worst that would happen would be somebody might kill us. Well, hey, as a Christian, that's heaven. That's the door to heaven. We can have confidence. Uh, you know, Paul was, was able to say, and as we look in 2 Timothy, you know, I've finished the race. I've fought the fight. Henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, you know. Uh, that's the confidence that we have. We can sacrifice our life for the Lord. It's no sacrifice. It's straight to heaven. We can yield our life uh, to the Lord. L look with me, if you would, in, in Jude. It's the book right before Revelation. It's only one chapter. Let me just show you a couple of things, and then we'll, we'll quit this morning. But Living by faith in God, it's not easy. But it is the way of victory. And he, he tells us we need to put on uh, the truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation. In uh, Jude 1, he says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother uh, of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. See, that's the confidence we have. Uh, we can have confidence. We can put on that helmet of salvation, confidence of heaven, because we're preserved in Jesus Christ. Not just by Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ. Look at verse 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Yeah, what a blessing, the confidence we can have, uh, to, not only to know the Lord, but to, to serve the Lord. I remember hearing a song, and, and it, it represents this uh, part of this thought. Clean before my Lord I stand, and in me not one blemish does he find. That's an amazing thought, isn't it? We see ourselves humanly. God sees us through different eyes. He sees us as justified and sanctified and glorified, a place uh, prepared in heaven. We can have confidence. You know, the whole armor is really a picture of, of Jesus Christ. And you know, there in Romans 13, 14, he says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's Jesus who saves us. It's Jesus who keeps us. Uh, the whole armor, each, each part is important. And, and these are not, like I said, physical things. These are spiritual things. We need to live by the, uh, by the truth and righteousness and peace and faith and the hope of salvation and, and the Word of God. God's provided it. Let me ask you this morning, are you using it? Are you looking to God for the victory or someone or something else? Take unto you as a command the whole armor of God. It starts with being born again. Are you? If you died today, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven based on God's Word? Uh, by faith in Christ. You know, we, we sometimes sing the song, In Christ alone my hope is found. Is that true? Is it true for you today? In Christ alone your hope is found. Uh, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. Stand against the wiles of the devil. Uh, God bless us this morning. Let's uh, go to the Lord in, in prayer. In an attitude of prayer. Maybe God is speaking to your heart today. Maybe you need to trust Christ as Savior. Maybe you need to be born again. Maybe you're a Christian, but you're not living by faith. Whatever your need might be, listen, God can, can meet that need. Father, thank you so much for your goodness to us, for your word. Lord, help us. Help us to understand how to live by faith, how to live righteous, godly lives. Lord, help us to put off the, the sins of the flesh, and Lord, to put on righteousness. Help us to live for you. Lord, I pray if there are those here this morning that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would convict them of sin, help them to see that the only way of salvation is through faith in Jesus Christ. Pray this in Jesus' name. We're going to take our